Hey guys. So today I'm going to be putting together my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. But first, thanks to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. Bright Sellers is a monthly wine subscription that uses a quick seven question quiz to match you to wines based on your own taste preferences. They send the wine directly to wherever is most convenient for you, which makes it a great way to try something new without having to go in store and shop for yourself. I don't know if anybody else is like this, but I get caught in doing a lot of the same even though I like to try new things. I think this is a really great way for people like me to try something new. Not only that, but Bright Sellers does also include these little education cards for each wine you're paired with, so we can learn a little bit more about them. The cards include tasting notes, suggested pairings, and also the origin of the wine, which is really cool. We can learn a little bit. Bright Sellers is offering my subscribers 50% off their first six wine subscription box. Follow this link, which will also be down in the description to take the quiz and try out some new wines. Again, huge thank you to Bright Sellers for sponsoring us today. And let's just get into it. This is the Millsbow cabinet. I end up going for the black one and the like taller version. There's also a short version. I think it's like this tall or something. Um, but I decided to go for this one. It just fits my bedroom a lot better. So yeah, um, yeah. For this cabinet, your greenhouse cabinet, you're of course going to need a few things. First of which is the cabinet itself. I'll link a bunch of the options I've seen people using down below, but basically it just needs to be a glass cabinet with a metal frame. Uh, the most popular common ones I've seen used are from Ikea. This one specifically is the Mills Bow, and I think it's going to work very nicely. So yeah, first of all, get your cabinet. Next, you're going to need some things to drill a hole at the bottom of your cabinet. So I'll be using these LED grow lights that I got from Amazon. These exact ones will be linked down below. It's recommended to have a couple of fans inside of your greenhouse thingy if possible. I didn't, like I said, I didn't find any that I really wanted to use in it right now, but I'll be adding that later and I'll definitely do an update. If you decide not to use fans, just make sure that you're not letting the humidity stay too high to the point that water is condensating on all of the surfaces to an excessive amount. You're definitely going to want to air out your cabinet here and there so that that doesn't happen because that's how mold and stuff like that happens. So just be careful about that. Then of course, we're going to need some plants, which I'm sure we all already have on hand. So first, you're definitely gonna need to drill a hole in your cabinet. We put ours in the bottom, in the back, on the side that was closest to our outlet, which ended up being my right hand side if I'm like facing it. And we just made it big enough so that this piece could fit in. If you're using a different light, you may need to make it big enough for this thing. Mine comes not put together, so they have these things so you can like wire them all up and you end up only needing one plug, which is really nice. And that's why I definitely, definitely recommend these grow lights in particular. I am going to put the hook thingy through the bottom and pull it up as much as it'll go through. So I'm going to take my light, my first strip of light, which is this one. I already unpackaged it. They come packaged in bubble wrap, but oh no. Oh. Woo! That was a close call. I saw online that these came with sticky strips and they actually do when I didn't see them already on there. I thought they were already assembled and then you just had to like take them, take the thing off. Anyway, it does come with sticky things, which is very nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply one of these to my little light. Two on each one, like so. I'm just gonna attach the two pieces. Okay. I think it's on. The box also comes with these things that attach the light, the lights to one another so that you're able to just have one outlet plugged in um, per however many lights you're putting in. Um, so I attached this light and now I'm going to attach it to this one. Maybe I'm gonna put them on diagonal. Yep, I'm putting it on diagonal. That seems like it's gonna work the best. And then I'm basically just gonna repeat the process. If you wanna just have one light on, you can. Um, but 
on this second one, I didn't make sure that the on off switch was facing toward me. So now I'm gonna have to like reach behind the light and find it, which is fine, but it'll just make it easier if you're a little bit more mindful than I was and make sure that it's facing outwards towards you where you can see it with your own eyes. And how I'm putting them in, I'm just lifting up the glass enough so that the wire will fit through the side and hook it up. Ah. Nice. Each kit does come with a few of these little things, which you use to cap the last light. For mine, I personally decided to go with the pink tinted lights. I think they look really cool. I know not everybody loves that vibe, but I think it looks really cool. So I went with the pinkish ones, but they do have a warm light and a bright white light as well. You just select it as you're checking out. So this is what my lights look, up, look like. So cool, I love them. I think it looks really nice. This is so cool, I'm excited, okay. So now that we have our lights all in, I have it shut off right now, I'm gonna go walk around and find plants that will fit in like the, um, not depth, the height of each shelf. And also uh, just plants that I feel could benefit from some extra humidity or maybe a little bit higher light. Yeah, I'm gonna go walk around and find some plants now. And this is the most fun part. I'm so excited. Something else I'm gonna keep in mind is any plant that I decide I wanna put in here, I'm gonna make sure it has like a cover pot. This one has just a clear cover pot on it or a saucer or tray or something under it just to help keep the glass a little bit more clean. So yeah. Oh, this is a big plant. Are you seeing this? This is huge. Do I need to take a cutting? I think I do. Hang on, let me go get some scissors so I can make this fit in here. You know me. <laughs> oh, these are some thick stems. My little eyebrow scissors I've been using for plants aren't cutting it. There we go. Okay, so now I have all my plants in here. I'll do a full tour at the end of this video. I'm so excited because I really like it. I'm, I'm really thinking it's gonna do good things for a lot of the plants I'm moving into here. I'm just going around with this cup and I'm filling up all of the saucers with water um, so that I can get the humidity going in here. I'm personally not going to add a humidifier into here just because I'd rather use that space for a plant or two. So like as an example, I mean, I guess to show you, here's a little saucer with some water in it. I'm just doing that with every single thing that has water. And I'm gonna fill it up all the way. so that the moisture can go into the air. It's done. I just added all of the plants and finished watering it like I was showing you. And I'm gonna do a full tour of all of the plants that I have in there and kind of explain to you why I'm putting them in there. Here is the corner of my room where the shelf is living. I could actually probably put a plant on top of there. In fact, I think I'm going to. Not right now though. Here is the frontal view. Kind of chaotic in there, but I personally love that. I'm a chaotic kind of person. So I'm gonna open it up and show you what I have going on. Here's a better view without the doors in the way. Full view. So many plants fit in here and I could even fit more, but giving myself a little wiggle room in the beginning. I'm gonna start on the top shelf. Here are the plants. Here's a little full view of the plants. So back here we have a Peperomia serpents. This is just getting a little sad in my plant room. I'm not sure why. So I'm gonna give it a go in here. See if a little bit more light will help. Here we have a Hoya latifolia. That is a cutting I got from a friend on Instagram. And it has now rooted, shot out this big long thing, but hasn't done anything with it. So I'm hoping that a little bit extra humidity will do the job, um, start growing something. So that'd be nice. Here we have my Winlandia. Here we have a Hoya Imperialis. I think this is a red one. Yeah, this one's a red one. And I don't think it was getting enough sunlight where I had it before. So I'm hoping this will help with the lights like almost directly on it. Back there we have a Florida ghost, just kind of growing slow. So I'm hoping this will help. We have a Burl Marks, a variegated Burl Marks philodendron that I got from Ashley. That leaf is so beautiful. 
kind of growing slow also, so I thought this might help. Here we have a Dishidia Buttons, which is not happy. It came from Hawaii, so it's used to really, really high humidity, and I just don't have that here, so I'm hoping um, this little thing will get super humid and keep it happy. Then this is kind of random, but this is a candy dish that I am using as a personal terrarium for my Begonia Darth Vidariana. It died back, I stuck it in here, and now it's finally growing in again. So instead of just putting the plant in here by itself, uh, because it is kind of growing sideways, it was reaching for the light where I had it before, I think this might help it grow up more, um, but I didn't want it to lose the humidity it's used to in here now. So have it there. <laughs> Seems kind of weird, but I think it's gonna work. So there is that hole for a shelf. And then just moving you down one more shelf. This is where I think this shelf has the most plants by far. So back here we have a Hoya glabra, which same as the Latifolia, just kind of shot this thing out. No new leaves or anything though, so I'm hoping this will help. Here we have a begonia beef steak, which has been fine everywhere I put it. I just think it's going to like it even more in here. Here we have my Trandoscantia nanook. This likes direct light and it doesn't like to dry out too much. Um, so I think this will help me keep it a little less dry. You can see it's getting a little bit crispy edges. So hoping this will help with that. Here we have a Alocasia dragon scale which I love. It's putting out a new leaf back here, but it was also kind of reaching where I had it before, so I'm hoping this will help it grow more straight. Here, I think this is a Hoya mindarensis. I could be wrong, and again, same with the other Hoyas I have in here, shooting out these long things with no leaves. So I'm hoping this will help. This is my Hoya Fichiae, which this loves high, high light, and it doesn't like to dry out for too long. So I think by having it in here with a little bit higher humidity than the rest of my house, it's going to grow a lot faster. This was like triple the size at the beginning of summer, but anytime I run into someone that loves plants, this is a Hoya that a lot of people want. So I've taken like four pretty decent sized cuttings for people from this. So now I'm gonna let it grow back and hopefully it'll like living here. So here is my variegated Hoya Bella, which I want this to grow faster because this is another wish list Hoya for a lot of people. And I've shared it a lot. Again, I think I've taken four cuttings off of this. Pretty good sized cuttings. Um, so now I'm gonna let it grow back and not cut it anymore. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll grow faster in here. Uh, this is a Hoya Micrantha, I believe. Growing really, really slow. It hasn't really done much, much since I got it at the beginning of summer. I got it at the same time as this Mindarensis, and this one is growing a lot faster than this one, so I just need to figure out the care of this. Like, it's not dying, but it's just not doing much either. So I just need to, I've just been every few months switching it up. Um, to see if it makes a difference. And once I find something that makes a difference, I will stick with that. Then here is my Finley Sony Nova, which this plant is very, it's a Hoya. It is very well rooted, um, but for some reason it's just drying up when it puts out new growth. It's put out a few of these and they dry up. Like it's just completely dry and dead. So I'm hoping a little extra humidity will help. It's such a fun, cool plant with like really cool coloring and texture. So it'd be nice if I could get this to grow bigger so I can share it with more people. This is my Skindapsa Silver Lady, which has been happy pretty much everywhere I put it, but I'm just seeing if I can get a little bit quicker growth here in this humid place, which is basically the case for all of the plants I have in here, I guess. Here I have this like larger saucer with a four Hoya in it. So this is a Hoya Pan Choi, which again, this is one I have taken a lot of cuttings from to share with people. This is my Hoya Variegated Abovada, which um, is rooted now. Like I'm trying to pull it out and you can see it's not coming out, but it has not pushed out a new growth point. So I'm just gonna figure, keep changing it up every few months as long as I'm not seeing growth. And once I start seeing growth, I'm going to keep it whatever it takes. And next to that, I have my Hoya Polynura, ah, Hoya Polynura Broguette, which was just these two leaves, and it has pushed out a growth point, which I'm very excited about. It is a little bit sun bleached because I let it get too dry in the south window, and it did not like that. So I'm hoping this will help me keep it a little more watered, where I can just keep water in here, kind of. Um, and here, next to that, we have a Hoya Sarawak, which... I love, it has shot out this thing, no new leaves, 
So here's hoping because this is such a cool plant and I know it's also a wishlist plant for a lot of people. In fact, one of my good friends, Heather Hoya, really wants this variety. So I'm hoping I can get at least another couple of leaves so that I'm able to share with her. So, okay, there is the second shelf. Moving you down to the third shelf, I have my, oh, I'm sure the full name, it's a Stan Hoya. Why did I say Hoya? It's a Monstera Stanleyana um, Aria, I believe. It's the yellow variegated one. It, I took a lot of cuttings off of it and it's just not happy now. I think I cut too much from it, so hoping this will help. Um, here, I believe this is a Hoya Matilde. Could be wrong about that. I'm not sure how to tell a Matilde from a Serpens. Eh, not sure, okay. And then this is a Hoya Bella, which I got as one cutting from the same person that gave me the Latifolia up there. And I love it. This plant is really easy going wherever I put it, but what keeps happening is it'll form peduncles. It doesn't have any on it right now. And I get all excited because Hoya Bella blooms are just absolutely beautiful, but I'm not able to keep it like moist enough out in my regular house world. So hoping by keeping it in here, the peduncle has enough humidity to not fall off and die. And down here is a Hoya Breviolata, which needs to develop some more growth points because right now it's just four leaves rooted in there. <laughs> All right, so this one is a Hoya. I wanna say that this is a Kalimantan. Correct me if I'm wrong. Put out this new leaf, it was one single leaf, but I just want it to grow a little more quickly because it's such a beautiful variety. Um, here we have a Hoya Crassio Petiolata. I think that's how you say it, Crassi, Crassi Petiolata, something like that. This is my favorite variety of Hoya, I think, as of right now, and I want it to grow more. So we're trying something new with it. Just here we have my Begonia Maculata, which has been doing fine, but every once in a while it gets crunchy edges and like a lone crunchy leaf. So I'm just hoping it'll be happier in here. Back here we have a not very variegated um, Jose Buono Philodendron. So I'm hoping that a little bit increased light and humidity will give it a little more variegation. I mean, the speckling's kind of cute too. Oh gosh, I need to wash these leaves so badly, but I'm just hoping for a little bit more than that. So we'll see what happens. This is a peace lily spath spathlophyllum jessica, which again is losing its variegation because I don't think it was getting enough light where I had it before. So hoping this helps. And down here we have a Hoya, which I was given by my parents as a Hoya breviolata, but I'm not sure if that's actually what it is. So I don't know, we'll see. It's been kind of a diva about moisture. It likes super high light, but it doesn't really like to dry out. So hoping this helps. Hope you're happy. So yeah, there's the third shelf. Now we are on the last shelf. Um, back here we have a Philodendron Brantianum, which is getting yellow leaves because I accidentally let it dry out too much. Um, hoping it'll grow faster. Here we have a um, Ripsalis, which I got as a free cutting from a plant I purchased on Instagram. I'm not sure what kind it is. There are actually three cuttings in there and they are starting to root, which is exciting. And in that pot with those unknown Ripsalis, I could message her and ask. I just haven't gotten around to it. I have my variegated Philodendron Gigantium. Really cute, kind of growing out like out this way instead of up. So again, I'm hoping this will help. And I decided to put my Orbifolia in here as well. It's not unhappy. It just has a little bit of brown tips. I had it in my bathroom before, but the windowsill I'm starting to keep it on is getting very cold now because it's winter here and snowing all the time. So I just thought it'd be happier in this environment. For now, we'll see what happens though. I mean, it was fine in there. It was fine in there. I just didn't want to risk it because I love this plant a lot. Uh, and next to that, I have my Philodendron and Plesimum. I believe this is the silver stripe variety. Yeah, probably because it has the silver stripes. Took a lot of cuttings from this also to share. <laughs> Hoping it'll grow back. It is a newer one to my collection. Um, and Philodendron are fairly easy going. So I don't think you really can go wrong in too many places. Um, but I think it'll really be ideal in here. So then I also moved my Monstera Silta Picana in here because I had it in the baby room if you watched that video and the roots are just growing like mad. 
So I thought this would be a better way for me to be able to watch the roots and see if it has adequate water or not. And I'd love to be able to grow this one more and share it with people because it's a fairly fast growing plant. Um, but for some reason it's like considered uncommon. So I'm hoping I can get quite a bit of plant from this. It's a little bit wonky growing all over the place, but you know what, that's fine. And then just back there I have my, oh, you can barely see it. The light's a little bit bad. Um, my Burl Marks Fantasy. This is the hugest one of my collection. I just took a cutting from it, you saw. And yeah, I'm gonna let it live here for now, but probably, probably not for long. I'm probably gonna have to move this one over to my grow tent. But um, I just wanna be able to enjoy its massive leaves all I can. And my grow tent is in the basement, so I don't get to see the plants that are down there too often. So I try to keep as many of them up here as I can, but yeah, there's, let's get this in here. There's that wild section. And here's just kind of another shot of the, the completed collection inside of my Ikea greenhouse. I love it. Highly recommend these lights. They are so cool work really, really well. And I'm definitely going to be adding some into my grow tent that's in the basement that I was just talking about as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm very, very excited about it. You know what? Where'd it go? Um, this does also come with keys. You can see there's a lock right there. Actually, it might just be out of screen. I have really bad eyesight. I can't tell if it's out of screen or not, but I seem to have misplaced the keys. Oh no, they're right here. <laughs> Lock her up to protect your, your babies for when your plant obsessed friends come over and try to steal all your cuttings. <laughs> try to steal cuttings from all of your expensive plants. Just kidding. We like to share, but you know what? Better safe than sorry. <laughs> oh, it opened. So why did that happen? Oh my gosh, you guys, it doesn't work. What? Okay, so scratch that. It pretends to lock to try to trick people, but doesn't actually lock. Why? That is my finished IKEA greenhouse. Well, finished for now, but I'll definitely be adding things to it as I go. Keep you posted on it. Maybe do an update in a few months please thumbs up or thumbs down this video, depending on what you thought of it. Leave a comment down below. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Kai was really screaming to be a part of the video. So here he is. Are you gonna be a little movie star or something? Yeah. <laughs>